To my right is Solar's half new bivvy. Now I say that because underneath this lovely new undercover camo version is the compact spider bivvy that we've seen before in its green format. So if you prefer camo bivvies and you like the compact spider before, then this is something that is right up your street. But before we jump into that, please do make sure you subscribe to us and hit the bell icon so you don't miss any future uploads and also follow us on all the various different social media platforms that are coming up on your screen. Now yesterday I got here when it was not as miserable as it is right now. I'm getting pretty soaking wet. And as you can see, the baby's keeping everything inside nice and dry, but I'm pretty wet out here right now. Yesterday, I set this up from start to finish. I'm going to go all the way back to then, show you how small it starts with in its bag, how it sets up, and so on and so forth. Just get to it. I'm getting back inside. In front of me is the bivvy all packed down in its bag and my rod bag is in front of it just for size reference. I've gone fishing today with my nine foot scopes, so they pack down this sort of size. So just for size reference, if you are someone that uses smaller size rods and you don't want to have a bivvy that then extends further than your rods when they're packed down, as you can see, it's pretty much exactly the same size as packed down retractable rods. Get that out of the way bag itself is nice and heavy duty and rather than having clips it's got these velcro tabs so clips can break over time velcro unless it's getting completely worn down by overuse they pretty much stay sticky or grippy the whole time of their life so they will completely adjust to how tight you want the bivy bag packed down and then the bag itself very very heavy duty and thick and just to prove this the first time i've got this out there's the manual which i'm probably going to ignore as i always do and the bivy itself now in here is everything you need to get going. So it's got the storm poles and pegs and uh, just the bare bones of the bivvy because as you'll see throughout this video, it's a modular system. This is the bare essentials. And if you want, you can then add things on top of that, like the ground sheet, infield panels and over up and stuff like that. Now on the website, it claims that this can be put up in just 30 seconds. This is the first time I've ever got it out. So let's put that to the test. Well, I've got all the little protective covers and end caps off things, elastic bands, just so this is exactly how it would be once you've bought one and got it yourself. I've got a timer set for 35 seconds, just to give me time to put the phone down. I'm going to see if I can get this up. I'm guessing it means just into the general erected state in 30 seconds, not all pegged out and everything, but just to get a shelter up, chuck all your gear under if it's going to start raining, you want it to be up nice and quickly. So 35 seconds starting now. Oh, that's 35 minutes. Let's redo that, shall we? <laughs> There we go, 35 seconds. Three, two, one, get going. So I understand there's only four legs from what I've seen online. It's a typical fan out process. This is where I should have practiced beforehand, but this is genuine. One in. One in, four seconds. Then you've got a cam lock system. Well, there's my timer. Technically, I had it freestanding, but you've then got to use the cam locks, which I'm sure you'd get used to. I did faff a little bit with the spreader block, but it's still under a minute to get it to that state. So yeah, I think, I believe that 30 second statement because it only took me 40, 45 first ever time of putting it up. And it's in a very rigid, sturdy setup. Time to peg it out, start showing you some of the other features. So now it's all set up and pegged out. I thought I'd start with the inside and what you actually get when it comes to coverage and space on the inside. Now, thanks to the flat back design, I'm able to push my bed chair right to the very back. So I've got as much leg room and space in front of me. And you've got quite a good peak in front of me. So a good foot or so and loads of space for bags and buckets and stuff either side. The only thing I would say is that it's fairly narrow. So it's quite a small footprint, this bivy. It's, it's very lightweight and small. You've seen how small it packs down. It's eight kilos just as it is with the storm poles, which are included, which we'll get onto in a second. But it does mean that it's slightly narrower as well. And I've got quite a bulky bed chair with its winter layers on and everything, big bulky pillows and stuff. But I am finding that the foot and head end are just about touching the edges. So that's something to be aware of. If you prefer to have a bit of space either side, a bit of leeway, a bit of give, then maybe this is going to be a bit too narrow for you. But other than that, plenty of space in there. And headroom is a massive thing for me because I need to sit upright from my back. I'm 6'1 and I just need that bit more headroom. I don't like being crouched like this. And the view is incredible because it's such a high peak and high headroom, I'm able to do this and not touch anything. And also while I'm on the subject of the inside, above me is an in integrated or included 
vapor shield or vapor guard that's here to reduce the amount of condensation it also makes it a bit darker above me but even with that in place there's still plenty of headroom for me and if i go forward even more there as well so if you're a bigger guy it may be slightly narrower as i've mentioned but you will not have any issues when it comes to how tall it is that's pretty much the inside other than the fact that you've got some mesh pockets on the left and right of the bivy maybe the other way around depending on how this views or whatever there's mesh pockets either side and that's pretty much the basics of the inside there is a zip around the front which is for info panels which i'll get onto in a second but the bare bones if you buy the bivy this is everything you'll get in the kit now if we move on to the front you'll see just how easy it was for me to get out of there and vice versa back in because it's quite a high peak on there as I've already said, I'm 6'1", and that's coming up to my shoulder. So no, none of this stooping in to get in and out. It sort of shelves back, so you a bit, feel a bit more cosy and protected in the back, but it's quite a nice height. And also, if you like to work on a, have a nice little work surface here when you've got your bits and bobs and you're sorting your rods, one, you can attach your rods either side with the Velcro rod retaining straps, but also you've got a really nice rigid peaked front here to put odds and sods on in there. And that also doubles up as a good feature for protecting you from the rain because it's nice and taut. And as you see, it slopes back like most of the rain will run that way but if it does land on the front here you've got this little gutter guard here which would stop any rain from tipping over the front it should run off the sides and down also storm poles these come included so they're not necessary to use all the time but i've put them in just for demonstration purposes but it does make it really nice and rigid stops it from collapsing down on itself and stops it from moving around too much so nice that those are included and it's a really solid bivy on the whole is what I've found. Now one other thing that I've found quite unique about this, well other than the sort of cam lock system on the legs which you use to tighten everything up which makes all the material really nice and taut, there's also the pegging points which are slightly interesting. So if I come around here and show you, now rather than just using your standard pegging points, Solar have given you a little addition of a tab which you can adjust. So basically, if I take this peg out, you can completely adjust your pegging points. You can bring it out further, you can make it shorter, or once you've pegged it in, you can then tighten it up. Now, this may seem like a bit of a unnecessary extra, but have you ever tried to get a peg in sometimes and you hit a rock? Like here, it's not too bad, he says, hitting a rock, but you've got everything pegged in right, and then one of your corners just won't fit in, and you need to move the peg somewhere else. You can use that to do that, or alternatively, once it's in, tighten it down even more, you've got a really nice and taut pegging point. Needed? I'll make you decide, but I think it's a nice little addition. And while we're around here, you've got this big old mozzie mesh vent. As you can see, it takes up, I'd say, a good 78% of the rear of this bivy. So exactly where your bed chair is, if you want all that airflow coming through, it's really, really nice. And this holds up in place with these maglock clips, which again is quite a unique little feature, rather than those really, really fiddly elastic toggles which are a nightmare all year round but even worse in the winter you've got cold muddy hands or the clips which can sometimes be a bit fiddly these are just little mag locks so there's nothing to break on the mechanism magnets don't break they don't wear down over time it's really nice and there's still plenty of grip it's not like it's coming apart because of that and you're never going to have any kind of pressure like that on a strap that's holding a mozzie vapor shield or a, anything back but it's nice it's nice and easy to click on and click off like that so if we just undo these two and zip it back down he says saying they're not fiddly that one's caught nicely so it shows they don't accidentally come undone as well i we'll zip this down with the first zip because again a little extra from solar they like to give you a bit more same on this side as you can see there's a bit of extra space now if i get these pegs you've got these guide ropes which you peg into place and that gives you airflow even in the harshest of conditions. Now, this isn't a unique feature. A lot of bivvies do this on the market, but maybe not with guide ropes or guide ropes. I never know whether it's guide or guide ropes. But a lot of things have the Velcro either side and you've got these little tabs that you've got to put in. Often you lose them or they're not very strong and it doesn't give you quite enough airflow. But this, that's giving you a huge amount of airflow. Even if it was absolutely hammering down with rain, you've got a nice bit of protection. You see it's just hitting to the Velcro. I'm going to take that peg out and then this one take down the second zip and cover that up there you are the uh, versatile rear section when it comes to the pegging points and also the mozzie mesh on the rear all of that can be tucked up as i said up into the top under this baffle so rather than it all rolled up and looking a bit 
not very nice on the outside or gathering water, you can tuck that up under that skirt and make sure that rainwater runs off nicely. And the final couple of points to cover with this bivy is that the material is Solar's Solar Tex fabric. You've got the stainless steel engraved spreader block. So unlike a lot of bivvies, which has a plastic main hub, this is stainless steel. So you'd be extremely hard pressed to break that and it shouldn't degrade over time. I think the material will probably fail before that spreader block does. Extremely rigid for the size of it. And there's a lot of room in here for its footprint. So it is quite a small bivy when it comes to its actual footprint but the size of it on the inside, as you can see, is ample. Now I did say that it's a modular system and you get some additional extras, including infill panels and an over which I'll get onto in a second. But firstly, we'll talk about the zipping ground sheet. It is exactly that, a zipping ground sheet. And it's not a flimsy little one either. It's a nice heavy duty finish. You've also got a zip on the very front, which I'm assuming is gonna fit up or marry up with the infill panels that I'm gonna use in a second. But it zips in nice and easily, start with the front left corner, all the way around and it's actually raised off the ground by probably about five six inches so it shouldn't get covered in gunk and get snarled up over time it keeps it nice and away from anything on the bottom so it's a nice fully sealed in unit so if you're someone that likes to be completely enclosed or excluding any kind of bugs from the outside and stop anything from getting in this should be uh, right up your street because it does zip all the way around and as i said with a zip on the front it should marry up to an infill panel in a second and give you a nice completely enclosed capsule so whether you're fishing on a, a small water in the uk where this doesn't have many rodents or any insects or anything or somewhere which is infested with mozzies and maybe snakes and things abroad and stuff you should be nice and safe in here with all that zipping in well, infill option number one is the solid infill. And as I expected, it zips completely into the ground sheet. So this is now one completely sealed unit, other than the odd little gap where the door needs to open and stuff. You're pretty much completely sealed unit inside there, which is really nice. And I've also found that when I put the the front on i had to pull the front to the side either ever so slightly so i didn't have it completely set up perfectly when i first did it so there is a little bit extra width in there now than it was when i first set it up but that's predominantly at the front so that's nice and taut now on the front the door can, can be completely zipped off if you like to or zip to the side you can zip it up and toggle it at the top again with those maglock clips which we've got here you can also do the mozzie mesh panel down like I have right now. And as I said, you've got the mag locks there. Well, that's your missed one. There's a third one in the middle. So you can use the mag locks to keep that down. And alternatively, you can unzip everything, pull it all back and toggle it to the sides. If you want to leave the front infill panel on, but in the day or get a bit more airflow, you can strip the sides completely back and have it as a completely open fronted shelter. So that's the solid infill panel, but there's also the option of a mozzie mesh panel, which I'm going to stick on now and use for this evening. Oh, I could just do that all day, it's so satisfying. And it just makes sense. So rather than fumbling with a zip on your mozzie mesh, you just want to burst out in the middle of the night when you've got a blistering take. You don't have to fumble with a zip because you've got your mozzie panels on. You can just run straight through it. And that sound, so satisfying. Oh, just makes sense. I love it when something just makes sense and works. So, so far, pretty much all situations are covered from the basics and the stripped back version of just the bivy on its own to some of the accessories to protect you from muddy banks and horrible creepy crawlies to the full infill panel in case the weather turns rather inclement and disgusting. This mozzie mesh panel, which as you already know, I'm a big fan of stopping you from getting mozzies in there, but not stopping you from getting to your rods in a hurry in the middle of the night. But lastly, what if you want a little bit extra protection on top of the vapour shield that's inside, which should reduce condensation, but you just want a bit more cover, a bit more protection and room on the inside, then there's one last accessory you can purchase, which is the overwrap. So I'm going to sling this on, hopefully before it gets completely dark, because it probably looks quite light on the camera, but light is getting away from me. So I'm going to stick this on and then get my carry on for the evening, I think. Oh, that's the front. <laughs> I'd have been here all night. I got the front at the back and the back at the front. Something must be wrong. Once I got it around the right way, that went not really easy. And it wasn't tight in one corner, loose in the other. Something's wrong, surely. <laughs> now my last comment was a genuine one. I've put up probably hundreds of bivvies during my career. And this one, 
Other than the fact that I put it on the wrong way around to start with, I found what I thought was the opening. Um, forgive me, I thought this was the door. So I put it on one way, I was like, there's no way this is gonna fit, what's going on? Then I twigged, this was the rear and the front was at the back. So I spun it around and once I'd figured that bit out, which is a pretty stupid mistake to make, it pegged out perfectly first time. Now, whether it's because, well, it was probably a couple of things, it's built properly, but also because you've got these adjustable pegging points all the way around, even if it was slightly out, I can adjust certain pegging points to make it fit perfectly, but I didn't have to touch any of them. It just went on nicely and fit first time. So a lovely, usable, friendly over to go on. Now, the reason I'm starting on around the back is because of this opening, which I originally thought was the front door, you can completely pull that back up and you've got toggles at the front. I've been really lazy at the moment, just stuffed it up under there because it does work at the moment. And that means you've then got access to this big rear vent during the day or whenever you want to have this open. So if it's still hammering down with rain, you can have this up and put the storm vent open and still get airflow whilst having an overwrap on. So that's a really nice feature. You can still access that. And of course, have it zipped completely down, which I'm going to do. Let's show you how lazy I was. I just tucked it up there. And then you've got dual layers all the way around like so and one final peg in the middle and you sort it now that's finished let's go back round to the front now on the front as you can see the door is in its correct position now and you've got a nice large mozzie mesh vent there i'm a little bit disappointed i've been spoiled all the way around the rest of the baby with these maglock clips but this one does feature the old-fashioned elasticated toggles but it's not an issue there's only two of them so it's nice and easy to use them i'll just lower that back down See, I'm only, I'm only fussing a little bit. Cover that back up, so then you've got your solid panel on the front. And then if you like, you can completely zip this door up, which is what I'm going to do tonight, and keep the mozzie mesh vent on the inside with the, um, remember? <gasps> there we go, it clicked then. Then I can put this one back at the top, which I will toggle back up in a second. You've got some clips. So then I've got dual skin all the way around the whole bivvy. Extra space here, so if I've got muddy boots or certain things or buckets I want to put out here. I've still got the mozzie mesh vent there and then the magnet door, so I can get in and out nice and easily. But it should keep it nice and warm and toasty in there. And uh, yeah, just really enjoyable, comfy night's sleep. The sun has just set. I'm absolutely shattered, so I'm going to have a curry and I'll talk to you in the morning about pricings and everything. Oh, it's dark. Well, unfortunately, a very quiet night last night. I was able to test the Mozzie Mesh infill panel by bursting out through it when I had a bit too much enthusiasm for a line bite in the middle of the night. But it did mean I could test it without even thinking. My legs were flung out of the bed chair, shoes on, and I was straight through that Mozzie Mesh head first, and it just pinged open for me. So that's a really nice feature of that Mozzie Mesh infill panel, but it still kept me protected from those still stray mosquitoes. We're in the middle of October now, but where I am, it's uh, still quite rife with bugs and things. So it was quite nice to be protected from them throughout the whole night. Nice and comfortable in here, just in a t-shirt. So uh, that was really nice to have that still in there. As you can see, I've unzipped it this morning just so I can film this piece without having to peer through a mesh. And it's really easy to take off because I've got the overwrap on as well. I'm still fully protected, loads of room you can see. Like even with my legs outstretched, I'm not even reaching the edge of the ground sheet, which I put on yesterday but also with the infill panel, uh, sorry, with the overwrap, even more extension of space in here. I have my tripods on the outside of the infill panel this last night, if that makes sense, about where you put your boots and things. Stacks of room for that last night. It's been pretty miserable all morning. It rained a bit last night. It's been raining all morning, and it's nice and uh, comfortable in here. Nice and dark, actually, with the overwrap on because it's dual layer, and you've got the uh, vapor shield in here, so zero condensation. It didn't get too cold last night, but still, it's already that time of year where you do normally start to get condensation issues. So on the whole, first night in here, I enjoyed it. It would have been nice to have caught a fish, but I've, at the end of the day, I was here to test this product out and give it a good use, and I have been able to. And unzipping that info panel, I think I've got sidetracked. I was able to do that without even getting out of the bivvy. I just unzipped all around here, and because the module one doesn't zip into the ground sheet, it's nice and simple one zip out, took out a couple of pegs and I've just stashed to the side there. So you don't even have to get out of the bivvy to take the infill panels off if you don't want to. But now we'll move on to the prices. For the bivvy itself, you're looking at 349.99 RRP. And then we move on to the infill panels. Now the solid camo infill panel, which you saw me put on first yesterday, that one's coming in at an RRP of 99.99. Or alternatively, you can go for the Mozzie Mesh infill panel, which I went for last night, which comes in at just 59.99. And then for those added little bits of comfort and protection from the elements when it really turns, the ground sheet comes in at 54.99 RRP and the overwrap comes in at 169.99 RRP. 
So yes, there's probably no getting away from the fact that this is a bit more of an expensive option on the market, but you are paying for something a little bit more high-end. Same with their stainless setter. At the moment, I'm using their black anodized stuff, which I've uh, done a video on recently, so that should be up before this. So if you've noticed that in the back of some of the shots, then go and have a look at that. And it's, it's you notice the differences between a premium product and something that, yes, does the job, but maybe won't last as long, or there's just cer certain little things that you think that could be done better. Solar do those things better. You've got the pegging points, little adjustable ability with the, the little straps in them. It's a little feature, but it makes a big difference. The ground sheet that's raised off the ground, I know that's not a new feature on, on other bivvies, but it's just nice to have that bit of give so that if you haven't set the bivvy up perfectly or your swim's a bit of an odd shape, you've got that bit of flex to get the ground sheet to fit. All the infill panels, they just went in nice and easily, no issues with filling with zips and moving things around. And the fact you can fully zip in the ground sheet to the infill panels make this completely enclosed unit and all the zips married up. And that again goes over to the overwrap. Once I got it on the right way around, as I so talked about yesterday, once that was around the right way and I put the pegs in, it just worked. And I've done so many bibs, as I've said, that they don't always fit properly. You've really stretched it in one corner. It's off the ground like this. It went on perfectly first time once it was around the right way and there was no issues. So that's a really nice point. There's all these things that have been thought through. They're not just cobbled together. They're built to work alongside each other and they do just work alongside each other. So you're not faffing on the bank and getting frustrated with it. It does what it needs to do and it does it very, very well. So yes, it's expensive, but I'll let you decide whether you think that expense is worth it or not. And comment below what your favorite feature about this whole bivvy setup is and what your configuration may be if you were to go for it. So please do head over to the Solar website if you like the look of this, you want to learn a little bit more about it than what I've told you in this, or have a look at some of their other items. As I mentioned, the black anodized stuff I'm using today. And uh, just, yeah, have a look around, see if find the stockist. And if you can get your hands on one and, and feel it for yourself, then I do recommend you do that. So that's it for me for now. Please like the video if you did and subscribe to us if you haven't done so already and follow us on all the various different social media platforms coming up on your screen right now. That's it for me for now. I'm going to finish my coffee. Will one of those rods to go off? But then I think I'm going to have to accept the fact that I got to pack down in this miserable drizzly rain and it's meant to get heavier. Joys. So Sola, you're getting this baby back muddy and wet, I'm afraid.